Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where we kind of give you a weekly update on what's going on in the Arizona real estate market. Kind of a quiet week this week, although interest rates did tend to take another tick up, up a little larger than we were kind of expecting. I'm going to show you this real quick and show you that we are up to 6.64. A lot of pundits out there were not expecting that kind of an increase in mortgage rates for this month. I remember everybody was telling you we're going to get four to six rate decreases from the central bank. But, uh, you know, there's just this old thing called jobs data that got in the way. So we'll remain uh, watching this. Right now, the bond market is going ahead and signaling that they're not expecting much to happen in November. Their next uh, decision on whether or not they're going to cut rates is going to be two days after the election. So for those that said they were going to cut rates to affect the election, well, how well did that work out? <laughs> it didn't do diddly squat. But the one thing that I addressed on Monday that I noticed was a huge jump and a spike in expired listings. It said over the seven-day moving average, 1,115. I thought, this is really, really odd for two reasons. One, the spike in expired listings always happens on the first day of the month because things just roll off. You have a listing, you have a date, and you tend to put, well, let's let's list this until September 31st. And then October 1st shows up an expired listing. But along comes, uh, I think it was uh, the 7th, and the expired listings spiked. And so I went in and I looked, I took a look here, and it just seems to be something going on screwy with the data. So I pulled up expired listings, and you can see that inside of that number are all these active listings, active price reduced, status change, status change. Something, they had some kind of a hiccup inside the MLS. It's still there. Then they have pending. Then we get expired listings. So 82 of these that are listed as expired listings are not. So that was driving me nuts for a day or two. So I couldn't figure it out because when I looked at... Uh, to share this with you when I looked at what the Cromford report has their expired listings have not spiked up they're sitting there at September 313 versus last month at 540 and uh, so nothing changed there now what's nice about what we're able to get looking at the Cromford data is they they don't just pull the numbers and spit them out they scrub them so they go in and do a deep dive and look is this where it's supposed to be and that's so what it, it's a lot of work and I'm glad they're doing it and not me and so uh, uh, they discovered that the numbers that came out on the MLS were indeed not correct and fortunately for us they didn't report it as such but it just caught me off guard which is not hard to do to be honest with you um, if I look at our pending listings now though in the market and as we get into, you know, the second week of October, you can see that we're still kind of playing around the bottom down here. Things are not spiking much at all. And then I found something that I thought was really odd. And that was Sun Lakes. Sun Lakes had only nine pending listings the past two weeks. Nine this week, nine the week before as low as what we saw on 2008. Now, I put two other years up here. I put 2023 and 219. I wanted to take out what I continue to call the silly seasons, 20, 21, and 22, and say, okay, how far off is this? And one of the things that I can glean for this data when I'm looking at Sun Lakes is that every October, after the second week, uh, pending listings do increase. That's kind of a no-brainer as we start getting into the season, but I thought, that's really low. So is this just something that's unique to over 55 communities? Well, let's go to Sun City and see if that's the case. So I went to Sun City, and that was not the case. Their pending listings went from a low of 19 up to 44. So they are climbing, and they are climbing seasonally like they normally do, but they don't get tend to get the spike in October like you saw in Sun Lakes. Sun City West, another over 55 community up there, um, their pending listings increased as well. So I don't know what's going on down in Sun Lakes. I just think they had a bad couple of weeks, and it's showing up in the numbers. If I look in total at pending listings, I wanted to go, well, maybe it's the election. People are waiting until after the election, and they do. There's a survey out there that said over 30% are saying, well, going to wait this out, and you know how I feel about that. I've said 
nothing changes. You're waiting, but you're not really waiting for anything because there's nothing's going to change, whether we get Republican or Democrat. Now, over the long term, of course, policies always change. Tax policy changes. But between now and November 5th, and then after November 5th, whatever the trend was is what the trend continues to be. So rather than just spout that out, let me pull up some election years here and show you. These are pending listings on election years this year, 2020, 2016, 2012. Okay. Prior, starting the summer in 2012, we started going down. We had these dips in September, October, prior to the election. But the overall trend in real estate did not change. They were going down anyway, folks. So it didn't change. It's like, oh, we our, my favorite party got elected. Sales are going to go nuts. I almost said bonkers. Going to go nuts. Well, they didn't. Or the bad guys won. Sales are going to spike. I don't see any evidence of that. I can go back to... 2008, but we had the big financial crisis there. So that was a big banking mess. Lending stopped, everything collapsed. So you can't look at that and go, okay, let's compare to that. We don't have the data to go back and compare to really what we should be comparing to, which is the late 70s and early 80s. Things seem to be similar. But look at our pending listings right now. They're as low as they've ever been for a long time. They're sitting here at 4,301. Now, their number um, varies from mine. I'll explain that in a moment. But you can see that we've just kind of been flat. I'm going to make a bold prediction after the election. Are you ready? We're going to stay flat. And then we're going to do something really, really unusual. As we get to Thanksgiving, it's going to drop. That's my... And look, folks, in this... This projection is free. There's no charge for that kind of high-end advice. Um, there's just <laughs> pending listings are low. I track it on a seven-day moving average, and we have been at 2,500, it seems like, forever. Now, the numbers that I pull are right off the MLS. Cromford pulls it off the MLS. They're getting some different numbers than I am. I'm not sure how, but the trend is the same. And what I noticed this week compared to last week, the number of pending listings only increased by three. And if you watch my video, I said three. Wait, three. So, they're, I mean, they're staying right there. It's like there's a line at the deli. They're only letting 2,500 people through the line at a time. And so I don't see that changing. It's certainly not going to go up with rates being where they are. Now, in the higher end market, um, they're doing well. That may go up um, as we get out of summer. And in the over 55 communities, that may go up. And you'll see that it does in Sun Lakes, does a little bit in Sun City and in Sun City West. So that may change things. That 2,500 might get up to about 2,800, I'm going to guess. Uh, but it is affecting our months of supply, as you can see here. Months of supply have taken a real hit. 3.2, 3.4, 3.6. We're getting to that magic number of four. Four is the number that's considered normal for a month of supply. Now, what is months of supply, you may ask? Well, if no other homes come on the market and our rate of sales remains the same, it'll take four months to eat up all those homes that are out there. It's just a measurement between supply and and demand. So it's it's a it's a key indicator. It's not going down. The fact that it's going up puts downward pressure on pricing. At four months, not a lot of downward pressure. That's considered a balanced normal market. But if we're pricing for what's called a seller's market and a balanced market suddenly shows up, now all those people priced for a seller's market are going to find themselves priced too high. So they need to adjust accordingly. Crawford Market Index is telling you the same thing here, folks. This is tracked daily, and it's going down. As you can see there, it's certainly not certainly not headed up. And that's because our sales are just not moving. They're staying 
right there, and because they're staying right there, we're seeing a gradual increase in inventory. And we have over 20,000 homes on the market today. And it, it took us a little while to get there, but we crept up about 350 units um, at a time, a week. Just boom, 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 and whoop. Here we are, we're at 20,000 homes. That's not a number that's really significant, except historically, we look in our market, the normal amount of listings that we have, and if we can even attempt to find a normal year, is 24,000 homes. But at that time, when 24,000 was considered normal, we didn't have near the population that we do now. So I don't know what would be considered normal now. But, uh, you know, it's history. Real estate's like that. You don't know until you look in the rearview mirror. Now, as of today, the recession has not showed up. The one that was supposed to be here has not showed up. We were supposed to be in the toilet this year. We were supposed to be down. We were supposed to be down in real estate values by 30%. That has not showed up yet either. So that's where our market is. Now, if you go to rickhelps.com and you want a report on what your home looks like, I'm going to show you what that report looks like. You just fill this out. We do not spam you. And those of you that have gotten this report um, can make a comment in the section. Has Rick sent me any spam? Is he emailing me? And the answer is no. But don't believe me. If you've got one of these reports, please let people know in the chat room if you've got any spam from us. I need your name, email, and city, anything else you want to know. Along with this, I'm going to show you what the report shows you. It's several pages. It gives you a value. Um, I'm going to click it up here just because I don't want to show the actual person's name on here. But it shows a value of three, 434, 673. Keeping in mind, I don't know what your kitchen looks like or your bathroom, but it's a very detailed report. And we, uh, we spit that out for you. It's going to show you what the comparables are that it pulled up, active listings in your neighborhood. So it's several pages. I think you'll like it. Along with that, if you fill that out, what I will do is I will go in and I will pull up um, Cromford data and I, I will share with you what your pending list, I, listings look like in your zip code, what your months of supply look like, and what your average sales price is going on. You'll just get that in email, nothing fancy. Just here's your report. Oh, and here's some numbers showing you what's going on in your neighborhood. So hoping to help you make a decision if you want to sell your home or if you're looking to pick up another home. Or if you're just very comfortable staying put, which a lot of people are right now. So I hope all that information helps. If you have any questions, shoot me an email at rick, rickhelps.com. Take care.